Hi guys, I've been getting quite a lot of emails and phone calls lately from various people asking me about flavour levels and how to get their hook baits exactly right, particularly coming up to the winter time when we're thinking about fishing with perhaps a little bit less bait but getting the hook baits exactly right. So I want to talk to you about the level of flavour that's used for the size of the egg. Here is a medium egg, here is an extra large egg. Quite a lot of difference in the volume. So what I want to do is to sh use this measuring cylinder, or measuring beaker, which you can see here, and it's got 50ml, 75ml and 100ml. I'll crack this extra large egg in it now, and we'll see how much volume that is. So it's probably going to be interesting to me, because I've actually never measured the volume of a um, large, extra large egg. So you can see here, I'll come in close to the camera, it's just over 50 mil. So we'll stick with this size egg, extra large. But what we will do is use this smaller cylinder here, measuring cylinder, and I'll put this medium egg in. And here we go, considerably less. So this has, got, this has got a volume of probably around about 40 mil. So if you're going to use a measured amount of flavour, and I use these little beauties, one mil syringes, quite important. The pipette things that you squeeze aren't as good as the one mil syringes. And I sell those in my measuring kits. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the size and number of eggs to calculate the amount of flavour we put in and in that way you can never get it wrong. So you never weigh the base mix, you prepare your base mix first, get that exactly right already with a bit of extra egg albumin in and we're also going to use this sieve and we're going to sieve today some bio shellfish mix here to get all the bits out and we're going to put 10% egg albumin powder or my hook bait hardener powder straight into that mix, shake it all together in a tub and then that will become our dedicated pop-up or sinking hook bait mix or wafters if you want to make wafters and we'll be using these little 10mm cool balls, 10mm is my favourite size, we'll be using those to make some pop-ups. This little tried and tested method is, works every single time and we can get straight on with it in the next clip. Okay guys, so um, clip two, we're just back on using a little bit of bio shellfish and we're gonna sieve it, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use this sieve, which is not a very ultra fine flour sieve, it's just a standard kitchen sieve, about one mil mesh size. Um, the reason we're sieving the mix is to get a much tighter texture on the finished boilie. We take out all the bits of bird food, bird seed, uh, any coarse elements of fish meal or krill extract that might be in there. Well, it is in there, but it's got to, it's got to come out, so we sieve it to get the bits out. So I'll weigh out now this um, 500 mil of this, 500 grams, sorry, um, and it goes into the weighing scales. This is little plastic thing has been zeroed. So we'll weigh this out, 400. I'm going to put a little bit more than 500 grams in because obviously when we sieve this it will, um, it will end up being a bit lighter than the original 500 grams we put in. So tip all this straight into the sieve, take out the bits, put the sieve down. I always like the smell of this. It's a, a very familiar smell. All the goodies in the base mix. Probably about 16 different ingredients in this mix, which has never changed in the 20 years I've been making it. So here we go, this is quite interesting to see. Here is the bird seed and the coarse items, which I'll tip into this tray, and you can see quite coarse bits and pieces, all the little Niger seeds and bits and pieces that are in there, linseed and all the things. 
So the sieving has taken out those coarse things to make that tighter texture that I mentioned earlier. So we'll put that to one side. I can still see there's a few bits and pieces in here, but what I want to do is re-weigh the final mix so that we get the inclusion of our egg albumin. Here it is, hook bait hardener powder. Exactly right. So we'll just tip this back in here. Scales are zeroed. Black it goes in. I think I might have done that before. It's exactly 500 grams. So that goes into the tub. We'll take our hook bait hardener powder. Sounds a bit like a cooking program, this, doesn't it? Saturday morning kitchen. So this has got 100 grams of um, hardener powder in. We've already put the 500 grams in here. So we'll keep it accurate again. Use our tray and I'll put half the contents of this pack, which will give us 10% to the 500 grams of base mix. Here goes. 50. So that's 50 grams. I use a tub, but you can use um, a large plastic bag with a seal on it and shake it all up. I tend to use these tubs. Squeeze the top on and give it a good shake together. Tap it down, and we now have 550 grams of beautiful texture base mix ready to go. Obviously, the amount of hook bait hardener that you put in to any different type of base mix is going to vary. And so, if you were using a super high protein base mix like my super milk, which is quite popular in the winter for small amounts of hook baits, fishing on the chuck, that sort of thing, um, you'd probably put 5% in because there's already a good proportion of gelling agents like WPC, whey protein concentrate, casings, milk proteins and other things in that mix already. So it is actually already quite hard. But we're using Bio Shellfish, which has got lots of different conflicting ingredients in it in terms of texture. So we've sieved them, we've put the egg album in, and in the next clip, will actually be making pop-ups. See you in a minute. Hello, back again. So we're now actually gonna put an egg in the, in the bowl and mix all this up. And I'll just show you the way I do it. It may be different to how a few other people do it, but it works for me. So excuse the sort of rigidity of my uh, planning on all this. But when you know something absolutely unequivocally works, you use it. And then you don't sit there behind the rods thinking, I wonder if I did that right. Are oh, my baits too strong? Have I got it wrong? Have I still got any pace wrapped around the cork ball? Etc. So it's all about confidence. So you remember earlier on, our extra large egg, we'll use that. So we'll set that down in the bowl. And I'm going to use a, an absolute cast iron recipe which some of you may have heard of already, um, and that is to this one large egg, I'm gonna add a measured amount of Alisalar flavor and plum. Here they are, Alisalar and plum flavors, blended together. The plum is a complex fruity flavor, which um, will cut through in the winter time or summertime. It basically will stay on, it won't be uh, diminished in its quality of strength, both in its central notes or its top notes, once it's been frozen or when it's been out in the lake for a 14 hour cold winter night. And the Alisalar blends perfectly with the base mix ingredients in bio shellfish, which are obviously ocean proteins, seafood, krill, all that sort of thing. So the two together are something that we know works and will blend nicely together, each of them bringing different qualities to the hook bait. And later we'll discuss how to get that flavour level right in three offerings as well. So we'll grab the plum first, take one of two syringes and we'll put, and this is, in, you're going to be surprised at this, 
0.2 of one mil. That's a fifth of one mil. So in it goes into the liquid. There it goes, one fifth of one mil. On top of the egg, put that to one side. Good old Ella Solar. And what we're gonna have for the Ella Solar is we're gonna do a whole mil, one mil. Bearing in mind this is much more flavour level than I would put into a free offering mix, but into one large, very extra large egg, one mil of Alicillar to one large egg is what we're using today. I'm going to put some of this shrimp extract in, which um, is a hydrolyzed product made in the Far East. Um, it's a cell, cell split, cell wall split, hydrolyzed shrimp protein, absolutely lovely. Smells horrible, fish like it. So into that one egg mix, we're just gonna put, you can see actually it's quite gloopy. We're just gonna put about half a teaspoon. So put the lid back on that so we don't spill it. Cover those up. And just get the fork in and give it a, as if you're making scrambled eggs really. It doesn't need to be beaten to within an inch of its life, just a, just a basic mix round. Lovely. And you can see that's just turned a slightly darker colour by the uh, addition of the shrimp. Incidentally, any extra extracts or additives that you put in these mixes isn't always necessary if you're using strong flavours. And we'll, we'll just take a second about flavours as well. If you're using good quality flavours, which have complex levels of additives and uh, aroma chemicals and natural ingredients in, them, in their actual makeup, you only need tiny amounts anyway. And the reason that, that putting, shall we say, slightly weaker flavours in a mix is that that would also include a much higher level of the solvent that is used to go in them and make them up. So the better quality of the flavour, the lower the level you need to use, which means the taste is better because the carrier solvent is less in volume. And that's actually quite important. So you don't need four or five mil of flavour, good quality flavour, in a one egg hook bait mix. You need 0.2 of a mil for the example of plum, and I'm putting one mil of Alicillar to one egg because this is going to be hook baits only. So just thought I'd mention that, quite important. So that's pretty much ready to start adding the powder. Um, this is a useful little thing. It's a flour shaker, a, a basically a bread making or dough making flour shaker. Um, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of the base mix in here, a couple of teaspoons, put that back down there the lid back on and this is quite useful when you're making hook baits and freebies to dust down any container that you're using or any work surface that you're using to help stop them sticking to the top of the work surface so we'll put that to one side and use it later okay so here's my white tub with the nice base mix all sieved that I made earlier on we'll add a bit of this down into the eggs and we'll start to just mix that round with a fork initially. Don't need any food blenders or anything like that because once you've done this a few times you can actually end up, surprise surprise, you can, you can end up with a one egg mix doing at least 50 or 60 hook baits, custom hook baits, pop-ups with cork balls and the whole thing finished and done in under half an hour. A bit more powder. And you can see it beginning, all the uh, binding ingredients and bits and pieces, they're beginning to form up into a nice paste. And the only way that you're going to, I think, find that the texture's feeling about right is practice, one. And number two, getting your hands in, and uh, they will smell, getting your hands in and feeling that texture 
with your fingers. We just keep adding a little bit at a time. I'll take this ball of paste out and show you that the, you, you can't feel it obviously because it's a film, but you just get to know the right feel of the powder. It's nearly there. It doesn't take long. Again, that very familiar smell is coming off. Just makes up into a, a fantastic holding paste. A little bit more. This is quite a critical stage because what we don't want to do is to make the paste too dry. Over the time that we're going to be making cork ball pop-ups, uh, which is what we'll do today, um, the paste will, will start to dry out a bit more. So the longer we take to do it, the quicker the paste will take to dry out. Um, sorry, that doesn't make sense, does it? The, the longer we take to do it, the stiffer the paste will be. So try and do it as quickly as we can. <clears throat> you can tell this isn't scripted, can't you? So we're pretty much there. You can see the, the consistency now. I'll just shine the light on this. It's quite firm, sticky. The egg has made it sticky. And I reckon that's about ready to go. So we'll put that to one side on the work surface. I'll just clean up my hands a little bit. Okay, back again. I'm only going to do a few of these to the camera because I can't obviously stand here and make 50 cool ball pop-ups. But people make this overcomplicated. You don't need any equipment. You just need practice and your hands. So I'm going to pull off a little piece about that size. There it is. Take a 10mm cork ball, push it in, it's about right, that's about right. So you're ending up with 16, 17, maybe 18 mil, lightly between the hands. And what I mentioned earlier on about this dusting thing, what I tend to do is just use a little tray, dust some base mix in, there it goes and then pop that in there, take another one, pop it in, there it goes, pick a little bit off till it gets about right, and you can feel it between the palms of your hands, sometimes if you think it's not sticking to the cork ball, if you feel it hasn't, then it hasn't, and it's probably because you've pressed too hard. So best thing to do is to just pick it off, double check what you're doing, push it back on again, make sure it, it definitely sticks. That feels better. And try it again. Drop it into there and roll it round. So what I tend to do, I'm, I'm just going to sort of dry my hands off here a little bit with some... Um, base mix powder. So you can see they've got a bit of base mix powder around the outside and this is quite important. I always roll my hook baits twice. So I tend to roll about 10. There we go. And then they don't stick and roll them again. And that is absolutely perfect. So I've just rolled those two. They're ready to go. And by the time you see the next clip, we'll have a few more rolled and we'll boil them. See you in a minute. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've just made a few uh, pop-ups with 10mm uh, cork balls. Uh, a useful thing is, my, my, my water's got a vigorous boil, a useful thing is one of these digital timers. 
They're only about £10. You can pick them up online. So we'll start the clock and we'll put the pop-ups in. You can see them. It's just a, a little wire basket. And I'm going to boil these 10 mil cool ball bio shellfish pop-ups for about a minute and 15 seconds. That should make a nice tight pop-up, nice and hard. So we'll let that keep going. Back in a second. Okay, so these are all done now, and we'll put them out on this little wire tray. I've had this wire tray about 35 years. It used to be my mother's. So I always think of her when I do my pop-ups. Isn't that sweet? Good old mum. So here they are. Every one a bite. We'll let those dry on there for quite some time. And this brings me to an important point, um, really about making sure that you get the finished hook bait to perfection. I always do this, the choice is yours, but I let these dry out for a minimum of eight to 10 hours. Overnight, just naturally dry. And then I either go fishing with them because I like to make my bait fresh the night before I go or the day before I go, They'll certainly last in the fridge a week um, without freezing and if you want to freeze them obviously they'll last for ages. So it's important that you do that air drying business and then you, if you make a big batch of say 50 hook baits, uh, whichever they may be, you can put them into little bags of say six or seven, eight, enough for a, a session, however long your session is going to be and when you're ready to go you grab your bag of freebies and exactly matching hook baits which you've made from the same base mix that your freebies are made from, very important, and off you go and do your trick, full of confidence. Um, it's really important as well, uh, another point I would stress, that we just keep a note in a diary of everything we do, a diary or a notebook. Here's my one, it's a little red exercise book, it's got 2019 on it because I haven't filled it up with the experiments and recipes that I've done over the last two years because I've stuck to the same ones. When it comes to doing other mixes we'll cover that in future clips but I think this is about as far as we can go at the moment with making hook baits and if anyone's got a query about making wafters um, all you do is to just use a little bit more paste and practice and get right. And what you can do to test the, the buoyancy or the, the way that your, your finished hook bait behaves in water is to cut the top off a drinks bottle. I've done it with this. Fill it with water and when your hook baits are air dried and all done, fill this with water, put it on a work surface and test out the different hook baits you've used in order to get the buoyancy exactly right. By the same token, what you can also do is put your sinkers in here, or a completed rig with everything all on it, with the way that you tie or attach your bait to the finished rig, you can put it all, all on so it's as if it's in the lake, put it in here and leave it overnight. So that you're, t you're testing your bait at home before you go fishing. In the morning, if that bait is still quite solid, hasn't come off a cork ball, you put your hand in, you fiddle around with it so that you can check whether it's properly on the rig, then you know that everything, you've not left anything to doubt is what I'm really trying to say. So this little trick of testing it in the water, both for buoyancy and for last stability, is a good word. Um, will it last? Is it going to still be there? Have I got it right? Catch you next time. That's all for now. Bye.